us for the webinar on, on refining employee engagement in 2017 of the trade. This now is in partnership with XOXO Day. I am Nana with People Matters and will be the host for today's webinar and will be speaking on the on the topic. We have the speakers with us, Madhu and Shubham. Uh, before talking about the agenda, I would like to give you a brief about the topic of this webinar. Managing and rewarding talent is an indisputable top priority to prevent talent flow, mobility, health and wellness, communication, analytics, and many more such trends rule in the year of 2016. This is to brace ourselves for 2017. With talent entering the workforce, organizations are busy strategizing their engagement strategy to deep dive into more strategic aspects and personalize the value proposition. To help you be prepared while you strategize, so next today and People Matters are proud to present a webinar on predefining employee engagement in 2017, your tricks of the trade. In this webinar, you will be able to find out the answers to the points like under understand the employee engagement practices that organize have for the organizations have followed in 2016. The employee engagement trends to look out for 2017. Gana thinks that should be on HR head's agenda for 2017 to engage with their employees. And fourth, identify risks and challenges that HR professionals should be prepared for to be successful in 2017. Moving on, I would like to introduce our speakers for today's webinar. We have Madhu Raghunath. He is the group head HR of TVS. Madhu is responsible for the entire HR function of the TVS and Sun's group Company of three different entity entities. He manages the entire HR and NOC function of the group, covering about 1,600 managerial executive workforce and about 6,000 workmen. We have 120 members uh, in HR and operation team to deliver the HR and operation solutions in the group business and functions. And our second speaker is Shubham Agarwal. He is general manager at XOXO Day. Shubham is one of the youngest leaders of XOXO Day. While leading the existing business function, he has grown business to keep knowledge in the last 12 months. He has had dozens of companies in making their uh, Tool Rewards program more delightful. Being near himself, he has fine knowledge of building team and sustaining the overall growth of the company. Shubhureshu's reader and loves off-roading with his jeep onto the South India's shrimp terrain. One of today's webinar is XXO Day. XXO Day is working with around 700 plus large enterprises to make their employer reward program more experiential. This venture uses existing experience to reward employees and also help enterprise to digitize is using SaaS platform. It is an iOS certified venture with 5,000 stores selling 10,000 plus experiences globally. This has been featured in various media channels like ET Now, NDDT, uh, TV, then CNB, TV18, and uh, these are few names of many more. And for you to ask your questions at the end of the webinar, for those who are attending the live webinar, you can at least submit your questions in the question answer tab, which is coming towards your right hand side. On the uh, we will we will respond as many questions that the time allows. Uh, exciting agenda for the webinar today. So without any further delay, I'm going to hand the web microphone to Madhu to start with our webinar. Over to Madhu. Good and morning to all the participants who have joined uh, uh, this webinar. And thank you to uh, People Match for making this happen. And so, uh, welcome my co panelist, uh, uh, We are going to talk about a uh, very important topic employee engagement. Because, uh, thank you and prepare for this particular uh, webinar. What me was uh, uh, how are we going to um, straddle 
three expectations which uh, all the participants would have out of today's webinar. One to understand some amount of serial uh, constructs and on the origins of employee engagement. Why it is important, and do we employ engagement? Just to answer the key four questions which people matters have actually come uh, to uh, of your call. To uh, what would be the people practices or employee engagement practices in 2017 which help us manage talent and. How would it be different from what was done in 2016? The first thing is how we use the word and recognition platform using this word, um, because that would be most popular and the funding part of employee engagement. First time uh, the nurses who uh, Start their HR journey. Uh, you might understand that employee engagement itself would mean only reward and recognition. But we need to understand that it is the friend uh, facing platform for engagement. And I touch upon that. And uh, I have done some amount of uh, research. So my questions to all the participants cover these three uh, themes for today. So one is the theoretical constructs, second is the practical aspects, which is what we call the tricks of the trade, and third is how we connect both these using the word and recognition platform. Where, uh, I think Shubham would also throw some light uh, segment to the uh, uh, submissions. I thought, uh, let us have a common understanding. And if you read this, uh, the comprehensive uh, sort of a definition, if we may call, because uh, defining employee engagement has been a tricky one, and to me, it means many things. So I try to capture the essence. So we start off this entire um, webinar with a very common understanding among us all as to first draw the boundaries of what is that we are trying to talk about. This it essentially talks about three dimensions. It's about how employees can feel passionate in their jobs. And are they to the decision? That's the second element. So one is about themselves and their jobs. How passionate are they towards jobs when they come in every day in the morning. The second is how strong are they committed to the organizations, you know, the values or the visions or the ethos or the ethics. So that's to enhance reputation and value. Third and the most important element of employee engagement or all employee engagement programs or the end objective or outcome as why we need to do it is how to discrete the effort. Such information does not happen if everybody does their day jobs and this go away. Success in organization happens only when everybody puts in disproportionate, I would say, disproportionate discretionary effort. It's only when organizational goals are achieved. And same success and superior performance can be guaranteed. So, this is. so I just thought let's start with this sort of a common understanding because this is going to have a very important bearing on what we are going to discuss. The third slide uh, talks about uh, some of the typical concepts on engagement. Talk about engagement, we normally, when I uh, interact with a couple of youngsters, of uh, um, uh, people who have just entered uh, the career, there's a wrong notion that English is all about having fun at workplace, 
having uh, out of um, parties or an outside uh, outbound sort of a program don't deny the forms of engagement but think something much more deeper and much more a business than the element within coach look at it learning very see i've just chosen only a few of, of uh, key um, my own in the engagement journey the engagement history a lot of uh, writings on this if you refer to the uh, net you would find a lot more uh, than what i have but the key uh, ideas in in, in uh, aka follett she is a very renowned uh, case worker if uh, some of you all in the group are uh, social workers the uh, be uh, remembering uh, mary parker follett because she is an acclaimed uh, case worker and a group worker and in the 1920s she had talked about employee work ethic productivity and motivation so engagement was revolving around that sort of uh, uh, concept in 1950s in after the world war frederick hersberg talked about thing called vertical enrichment which still even today remains the essence of engagement where you look at just uh, providing development opportunities to employees the actual usage of the word and these people use did not use the word employee engagement words like morale or job satisfaction and things like that the 1990s actually uh, defined personal engagement it used the word uh, employee engagement or human resources engagement or engagement as harnessing organizational members the work roles to their work roles and close to it and then others in 1993 looked at four we uh, of looking at uh, employee engagement one was the need satisfying approach but anti thesis is approach which was the opposite to um the uh, same and the negativism which would be there it was about involvement energy and other things satisfaction engagement approach which is what uh, the q2 and q12 actually focused on and a multi dimensional approach i'm getting into the theory. critical concepts you can do more reading of these things uh, specifically on uh, by googling yourselves but i just wanted to give you all um, aspects of this so that you some reference to some of these theoretical benchmarks and do subsequent to the webinar you can do a reading in case you are interested then obviously the gallup engagement hierarchy which is been up for praise and criticism both ways It's very too short. Some say it is the best, and there's a lot of uh, mixed uh, feeling around that. But it did create a, a big uh, benchmark engagement uh, continuum. What do you mean by engagement? I thought I'll just I wanted to make it very simple for practice also, because we often grapple with a lot of uh, abstract and theory. but when it comes to actual practice we are left um with not of a friend so i uh, developed a sort of a framework the organization the ceo and the other people uh, stakeholders whom uh, the hr practitioners uh, serve all as to what do you exactly mean by this so then you two visible uh, two um, Uh, so one is on visibility and one is on impact so there are events which you for high visibility so even a simple uh, um, at the end of the month for a birthday celebration or an outbound or a physical event or some of a uh, uh, event which engages and energizes people on a momentary basis it's like the adrenaline rush you say call for a floor meeting and have some sort of a um a feel good uh, sort of a meeting in mean, that that's important and that's very high on visibility to do only the, that uh, that might not carry the day and that might sometimes also be the cause as to why hr sometimes gets a uh, bad name because we tend to do more of that that sound the yellow box so you should do little bit of it so that you keep you in the radar 
that you do meaningful activities and some fun activities, but you don't overdo it. Which do not have any visibility or impact are best avoided, and they are in the red box. We should not get into that at all. I think this is something which each one of you all should um, do a filtering for your own self, because each organization, blue, red, and green, and blue will be very different. It is a uh, one size fits all. It would be different for somebody else, and uh, BFSI would be very different in some IT company it would be extremely different. So they will have to choose what would fit in. But this is a very good filter which we can actually test before we run any particular intervention or a program. I actually request people to focus on the blue box. Very high impact engagement items, typically dialogues with constant dialogues, leadership attention, thing to be about their work environment and their tools. Uh, doing something about it, elevating um, issues, removing obstacles, making them feel very happy at work. All of those things which actually are not something that are on reward, but then you need to find out a creative way to bring it to the visibility level. That's what I call the green box. So you might do a lot of good work, but then need to package that and this particular blue box into the green box. I had some impactful work, and this is what I would present to the air workforce. For example, if you have a very robust village succession planning, which you have done, and has uh, really captured the imagination of the employees, and they are really happy about it, it is also working for you. you present it in a company forum. So if you have an annual strategic uh, meeting or some other forum, showcase what is it that you have done as an HR intervention which really led to the betterment of the employees. And that's what I mean, pushing impactful work into the visibility zone. And that's where the green box comes in. I think you concentrating on the blue box, a lot of on the blue box, and try to showcase those which has been done. All remember that you need to have some sort of you know, uh, to that there's some amount of fun element in it, but don't overdo it. Because overdoing it might sometimes make HR just the uh, balloon and the cake guy, and that, that would be a very uh, thing. And I think we need, as an HR fraternity, we need to be tough ourselves within our own fraternity and to how others perceive us so that we become better and better. So you do more of impact and push it to ability level, you will be respected. That's uh, what would make you more popular. Uh, you choose between popularity and respect. That's the essence on it. You need to have engagement, as you seen in the definition. This, again, this is a very simple uh, construct which I sort of uh, thought would be helpful to people. There are elements as to why do we do all this engagement, why this entire focus on why should we at all be bothered about engagement and things like that. It's only to salt or uh, elicit, I would say, discretionary effort from people. What do you mean by discretionary effort? Discretionary effort is effort which is um, put towards the goals of the organization to achieve the goals of the organization on a completely voluntary basis by the employee with any supervision, with any coaxing, with any pushing, but the employee himself voluntarily walks a mile and that it needs to be done to accomplish a task and accomplish the goal. I think and research has proven and my own personal experience over more than 20 years I think that when leaders uh, age with people personally, even a particular project or a task, which would have happened to many of you all, there is disproportionate amount of energy, uh, vibrant energy, which is uh, done. It gets the discretion in your favor out. And that helps the organization to move forward in Great, uh, with a very great momentum and goals. 
and the most difficult of tasks gets done easily through tremendous amount of teamwork collaboration will egos coming in as where discrete effort comes in personally so one of the reasons engagement needs to happen and what will be there on the x axis and while have discrete effort as a outer what is good then is obviously the willingness of the person so as to how will we get willingness of the person as an input so input is again uh, in its willingness is an input but to get that willingness to get that input uh, from the person and the various mechanisms of how we can do it so this refers to the input dictionary effort is the output so to do the engagement to singularly focus on discretionary effort let's sit discretionary effort from and that uh, is important let's uh, see um, what are some of the engagement fundamentals one is very key. a lot of literature and lot of experiences have shown many people would even categorize this as intrinsic reward and extrinsic reward while coming and touching upon the reward uh, uh, continuum this essentially engagement essentially focuses on intrinsic rewards so does the person feel very happy at work the feeling that the job is important what job is he doing is he having absolute clarity on what he should do career path in front of him or sometimes uh, we feel that he is lost somebody else is able to offer him a better career path then he tries to choose that path without even knowing what is there in store for him in the organization constant feedback being given a flick is not positive or negative feedback is just feedback we do not categorize feedback as positive or negative is back leadership attention so when this is means these are seem to be obvious but in a organization uh, world wind uh, 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 so we call it we just get to do many of these, these things leadership attention you know that you need to go and spend time with some of your key resources but you don't do it for months on end suddenly when the guy loses uh, the organization then you try to go and spend and tell him how important he is a very repeated across organization you know so good even things like is it clean is it need is it uh, good so that is something which we need to really look at how the values being role models by the leaders is the innovation an ethical one these are some of the things which really make people to be stay engaged with the organization and the manager are we communicating clearly and enough are we getting widely that is very important it is not that you are communicating only to a certain set of managers some nation do that mistake they are talking only to their top 30 managers uh, in thinking that these 30 managers would keep cascading down the organization which never happens so are you doing this widely through say a webinar like this or are you doing it through a newsletter are you doing it through an emailer are you doing it through a town hall or telecon or various mechanisms are there but are you communicating well enough the leadership having the opportunity to voice out our employees able to voice out their concerns voice out their opinions and views either in the meetings or in the reviews or through surveys or it that's really important and do we take action on it because one of the biggest things uh, the bane of surveys is, is we do in a lot of surveys they say survey is the last step in employee engagement many people all uh, have a view saying that it could also be the first step i say a last step is because there are a lot of fundamentals which we need to do and get this going in an organization before we even are ready to do and ask for feedback from people there are some mandatory standards as they call which to be done and this is many of the things which you have seen earlier are some of the minimum mandatory standards do you have a proper job description do you have proper tools do you have your environment these are very really important stuff so so you rush into a survey without having these things in place so you keep getting feedback saying that you please uh, check the water cooler and please do this and please do that it becomes very petty and becomes very tiresome 
All right. those stuff needs to be cleared out of the way. Get this one fully ready so that you can take meaningful action on feedback given by people to make your engagement process much more purposeful and meaningful towards the organizational goals. Empower very, very important. Uh, we say a lot of things, but do we actually practice them. Uh, give them the opportunity to take decisions. I think this is very, very important. One of the biggest elements of engagement is control. Employees like to have control over the work which they do, control over the pace of work which they do, uh, what is it that they can contribute. So they like to have a lot of element of control on their contribution, on the pace, on what they can do, what they can say yes to, no to. To give all of these things into the job design. So respect uh, employees' view on this. So that's the reason to sit down some of these things as management uh, fundamentals. One of the important tools which we use for engagement, a uh, practical one, would be the map. Use a map, map map to all your employees. And that's a sort of an analogy which we give. Let an employee just go around the organization, but give him a map. What map is nothing but help him achieve mastery in the job. And the wonderful uh, YouTube link which you can all go through, which is by Dan Pink, which is Autonomous Mastery and Purpose. Uh, I would request all of you all to see that. Uh, he talks about how uh, helps an individual to stay motivated in an organization. It's a very useful link. If people who have not seen it, I request you to see it. Um, what does autonomy do? Autonomy gives a lot of uh, happiness. It gives a lot of uh, control over the job. First, gives some of a a uh, huge amount of uh, emotion because the person is linked to what he is, what he feels strongly about, and it's so in alignment with the organizational values, it makes it that much more stronger. So, do a map to employees is a question which all HR heads ask in 2017. Now, this is important. This is fundamental truths and fundamental universal truths and which we never uh, escape from. And, and we do the fundamental universal truths really well uh, to an extent. You will have very, very well engaged uh, employees who do a discretionary effort. So I am just focusing on the uh, fundamental aspects. Leadership. There is leadership essentials for engagement. What does a need to do? A lot of things as a leader will be asked to do. But on this uh, um, a very interesting uh, um, piece of framework, will be helpful for our leaders, especially the HR leaders, uh, who can also groom the stakeholders and the CEOs and other people. Is the four elements to it, basically two elements. One is to do with the organization and one is to do with the manager. The question is, do we have a very clear vision and how engagement with the organization for the employee. So those are the top two on the top row. This is to do with the manager. How is the engagement with the manager for the employee? And what competency level of the manager to really help and groom and develop that employee? And really, does he have the capability and the competency? When these two things get married, that is the organization and the manager. And with the organization's vision, employee's alignment and engagement with the organization, and with the manager and competent levels of the manager, then get a sustained high performance. Now, go through more details of this. Uh, I have given the source, I've um, adapted it. You can also go through this. Uh, that gives you a lot of insights on how you can do um, better levels of engagement. We need to also what engaged and why people are not engaged. This article talks about a lot of uh, key insights onto it, and that is very important. Now, I just used uh, the um, marketing uh, framework of Moments of Truth because uh, the fundamental test of whether employees are engaged or not 
talk as an HR person a lot about saying that my people are very engaged, they are happy and all of that. But the test is in the moment of truth. When somebody is going to go and test it, who is the body? It is going to be the stakeholder or it is going to be the organization owner or the chairman or the board of directors, the stakeholders. When test, we need some sort of a framework. And I found this marketing four moments of truth very uh, uh, full. Juxtapose this with our HR. If you four moments of truth, it's very, very powerful. If you look at the end engagement as a, a product, and process as a product, and, see and read it from that perspective, it offers some very, very clear truths we need to confront ourselves with. So in our engagement process, we are recognizing the need of the employee and that the employee really buy into this process or that it becomes a transactional affair. That's the first part. Second is, does the employee really feel happy? Does he really, does it ring a bell in his mind when we say HR organization is having a very good, robust engagement program? Third is, does he really go become an ambassador of it and become a true fan of it and give back to the organization in more greater measure by discretionary effort? I think this is something which we should uh, mediate, help us create our own moments of truth. I thought this is an analogy which we can use. Now, talk about this concept. How do we front end all this? And this is where rewards play a very, very important role and which I think Shubham would also elaborate a lot on this. Rewards and recognitions are the platform which we support the entire engagement process. For every engagement, if I call the back end uh, parts of engagement are to do with the topics of job design and workplace design and engagement design or leadership attention and all of of that how do you translate and demonstrate your intent so all that is the intent part the part is rewards and recognition and that's the platform you have an intent how do you translate intent and how do you manifest it and how do you demonstrate that intent is it through the rewards and recognition platform and other there we need to stay true to the core uh, the job role and the individual's contribution, the team role, or how he furthers or he or she furthers the organization's interest rather than trying to be polished. I think again again, we need to be legal of ourselves and not to try to be populist, but try to use and recognition. How does the recognition reinforce behaviors which help organization's goals to be achieved, which helps to generate momentum to the organizational goals is what we need to look at. And the other one concept again, again talks about how we have variety of rewards engagement, uh, rewards and recognition. It's just not just about for one particular thing. And there's a very beautiful concept given here. One is you have a company-wide plan, which helps you to have some amount of minimum mandatory loyalty and trust and some sort of an engagement. There are niche sort of reward programs where you really look at, at for the big idea or the innovations, then you have something for the core roles, something for flexibility and autonomy to the manager. And that's what is about the Agile organization where managers are able to manage their own kitty and they are able to distribute their sums of money for whatever they need to do depending on uh, the employees' uh, attitudes and behaviors and their discretionary effort towards the organizational goals. I think these are two uh, important things uh, which we need to really focus on. So now we are moving towards as to the importance of how we do the rewards and engage, uh, recognition uh, as a platform. Coming to this part of the presentation on in conclusion, about six Ds. And what are those? You need to do the engagement on, you need to do it, not about it. And that's why I call it doing it daily, do it directly. 
mean it's not through some indirect manner you need to have a face to face sort of an interaction or some sort of an interaction where there's some element of a first touch yeah okay you will deliberately do it be conscious of doing it when i say deliberately I mean conscious you need to recognize some of the uh, area engagement needs to happen be very diligent about it So don't just cover and concentrate yourself only in one area. Distribute it across the organization. Look for good jobs being done. Look for positivity. Look for a lot where you can recognize people. That's something, and just write across the organization. And this for constantly reinforcing the purpose and vision of the organization and how we can contribute and grow in this. importantly manifest and demonstrate this benefit which an individual can get out of this process that is important and many people have used in many of ways in 2016 when you looked at uh, constantly there have been new things evolving there have been a lot of focus on self development now people have moved away from only just nominating to some uh, uh, awards or some uh, travel rewards and other things they have even started going towards self directed learning a lot, lot of certification courses and a lot of things i have seen a lot, lot of uh, impact in 2016 towards that so people have started moving employees have started recognizing the need to be different it's not just about rewards it's about their own personal growth so a lot of personal uh, massive online uh, courses Uh, on Osra, Dex, uh, where you can be sponsor candidates that we done a lot of the uh, um, like quench where you give a um, reading a sort of an atmosphere or master or any other something where you subscribe and make uh, learning available available and apart from that a host of personalized groups I think that is the biggest thing in 2017. a lot of the risks and challenges again when i was thinking about it when you personalize rewards you have the risks of going to do a lot of comparisons they are going to have a lot of uh, questions which come to you you and then this is how do you straddle all that the fact is that you need to personalize you can have one like in the earlier days some 10 years or 15 years back you just give one particular uh, reward to across to all the people or make it as a team reward so that nobody gets offended you have to differentiate you have to get individual you have to make it personalized i think that's the biggest challenge i don't see a risk there i think to starting prepared for it yes somebody might get offended but then our selection of people to be rewarded also should be very sharp so that you engage so if you miss out somebody then there is a risk of that person leaving you and going to a place where he is much respected so that's the risk so the risk actually makes us to be sharper be vigilant and do not miss out that one good act of a person who is actually taking the discretionary effort or the pain of for the organizational goals i that is something which we need to really focus on so the focus rewards for 2007 would be differentiation do you will reward and the team rewards obviously i am not going to leave out team But into rewards also and personalization. Even if you are getting the team reward, can personalize the rewards and make it more exciting and more engaging for the person. And we really tap into the other human being other than the work side, yeah. and you also engage on the personalist and hobby side. And that is going to be another one big area which people uh, like Shubham would elaborate uh, more. So this is what I had. Uh, today i know this is a very vast subject but uh, paucity of time i am um, going to stop here and i believe after this uh, um, she is going to interact with us and i have put a q and a on slide here i, I think i would take in questions once uh, shubha um, do his uh, uh, presentation uh, if that's a uh, uh, model i thank all for listening thank you thank uh that was a great session from your end and uh, bring lots of learnings for people like us who are from startups and for people like us who are going up in the hierarchy 
to to engage people better and uh, differently. Uh, well, I'm on both sides of the table, uh, being from a uh, big organization as well as right now from a startup, and uh, I think uh, uh, there are big differences in how how engagement works in both the arenas. I like to start with uh, how we you know look at engagement and how it changed for us over the course of uh, for the pe uh, period. So when we started as a small sort of group of about uh, 10 people, it was a small, I would not even call that an office, and uh, everything was done by everyone, right? So you guys is, uh, is on the also and coming back and doing the operations also and all of that. Uh, the problems or the the, uh, the issues to be uh, there in the office were being solved by the immigrants themselves, right? And uh, with every problem that came in, the innovation and creativity. And that itself uh, became the engagement within the organization. Uh, out a very uh, stark uh, point is accountability. I think back then everyone had accountability on themselves, and everyone felt that need to, uh, you know, be a solving the problems. And uh, that became for us the 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 engage of the organization. Some examples like uh, we had our office walls being very dull, so we thought, what should we do? We did not have the money enough to, to get them paid. So uh, just all of us just uh, got on and uh, you know painted the walls ourselves. Uh, there was an incident where it was too hot and uh, uh, it was and it was really hot. So we had some uh, uh, we had some cool uh, water coolers and all of that. But then how do do we kind of uh, make things go away from people's mind? So we came up with earthen pots and we had different lemonades, uh, you know, different juices and things in different pots. Uh, there were uh, different instances like that. But then we grew and we became a big organization. Uh, a lot of these things started uh, becoming, you know, derogatory for us. So people were asking what are their roles, what are their, uh, what are their uh, KRAs, uh, what are their exact jobs. Uh, uh, pressure started building in, and that the key was there became to a, to, to its tip and it tipped, and uh, it became a mess. So the, we kind of uh, understood that you know now the same structure that we used to work on would not work in terms of engagement, particularly and the recognition. So we thought, uh, what is that we do next, and how do we grow from here and uh, go to the next level? And that we we, we kind of understood. Uh, the whole uh, employee life cycle that how it works, and uh, uh, you know from right from uh, up an employee uh, entering into the system, from basic rewards, uh, uh, all these things were uh, highlighted by Madhu as well. Uh, and, uh, the rewards, the rewards for their personal occasions. How do you how do you personalize them? How do you make them different for them? Uh, uh, this is uh, this is something that we kind of understood uh, over a period of time. Uh, you know, trying as a very small startup to, uh, to an organization which is now 200 people. Uh, uh, we then found uh, that uh, uh, the structure has to be very well defined, and yet it has to be uh, it has to be something which which interests everyone at a personal level. Now, now we very well know that the whole world is moving to a data space, and uh, like Madhu said, that we, uh, there should be a platform which gives the uh, addition to the managers and not just the you know the top leaders to reward and engage people. But then the important point is how do we maintain that human touch in those rewards because that's the that's the essence of uh, engaging someone, right? Uh, that's as to how we engage the human touch. Uh, a very important thing from the psychology uh, it's called strokes and uh, strokes particularly means as to whenever you gratify someone, whenever you appreciate someone, whenever you thank someone. It's a stroke for them. It's as simple as that uh, you know, you, you someone uh, you walk into the morning into the office and someone says, "Hey, nice shirt." That's a very small gesture, but that's a stroke for you, and that kind of stays with you. Now you maintain those small things. Another important thing that Madhu also pointed out was the values of the organization. How do you build those values, and how do you maintain them? How do you uh, keep recognizing those values? So of that, I think uh, uh, we we came up with this. Uh, for experiences which was also an offering from Expecto Day. Uh, keeps that human touch into place and uh, gives that flexibility to the employees 
to choose and engages them in a better way by extending the 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 gratitude to the families and friends as well where they can enjoy those rewards with their families uh, the digitization of all this piece is one thing which i think uh, has been done uh, through the tool that we have but then how do we uh, uh, like that how do how do you personalize those rewards and how do you make sure that uh, these sense to the people and people will not come back and uh, uh, compare or uh, you know kind of uh, on that there we have uh, uh, came up with a lot of different solutions not just experiences but different learning courses which you can again use and uh, as, as your rewards or uh, some some different uh, uh, team outs which are not just fun activities but then a lot of lot to do with how do you come to as a team so i think some things uh, that that we have come up with and basic the basic thing that uh, behind all of these uh, building of all of these uh, uh, options is that we do understand that uh, memory is priceless and with all these uh, offerings uh, that we have on the table for uh, employee engagement uh, we kind of want to get very personalized and we want to make, maintain that human touch into all of those uh, rewards so uh, i'll i'll kind of uh, finish here because i think the time is too short and i'll i'm sure you all of you have a lot of questions so uh, i think we can take the questions now yeah uh, so mother i can see a lot of questions that have come in well, would you probably to okay yeah um one is uh is from uh, Leah is uh, what are the main challenges to have an efficient engagement of, of employees and i think i cut uh, this in one of uh, my um, uh, aspect is to get if i was to single one particular aspect is uh, ship attention is some and leadership uh, commitment process that i think we need as hr leaders we need to first systematize our leadership across levels uh, first level of leadership and right up to the ceo levels leadership sizeization engagement what does engagement mean and how do we need to do it how do we need to do it i think all the three sometimes are required in different measures some people might be okay with uh, they might be okay with two parameters so they might not understand the third one but why we need to do it what do we actually mean by engagement why do we need to do it and we need to do it i think sensitization of leadership once it happens and you need to build the commitment of leadership that is the most important uh, challenge or important task which is in front of the hr people and engagement is not to be done by hr people it's all managers including hr line managers so i am a line manager for some of my hr uh, team i need to do that similar but unfortunately many people understand it wrongly saying engagement is about hr from some programs and trying to do some good stuff it is not that so the challenge is for you to really break this Better as a practitioner, and so the engagement is, is uh, each one's responsibility. If I do a job, then nobody would do it. So I'm being cautious with my words. It's each one's responsibility and duty to ensure that their team members stay motivated and find purpose and meaning. I think it's the biggest challenge. The next one is from uh, Pratyush. Uh, would you be able to share some few examples of initiatives which you would move in green zone for your organization? Yes, exactly. We have something called uh, Elixir with TVS and Sun. What we did was we curated a lot of things because one of the biggest things which we face as another one challenge. The next big challenge, uh, building on to the last question which I answered, is on. 
uh, till when we really look at very outlandish sort of engagement opportunities then the lot of cost factor comes in so what we said was we want to engage with employees at zero cost little zero cost takes their own time and uh, the small internet uh, cost which are there so that let us look at all, all the free courses which, which are available to us on the uh, mooc platforms and ship them to our requirements and this was done uh, by my team member uh, now works with me and there on the webinar Uh, she has actually uh, done this we did a entire curating of all the uh, courses It was uh, relevant to the uh, people in the organization we said that we sent out personalized uh, training and development plans and from the world class universities this we actually presented this was a very high impact item but this got some traction and then started people started uh, taking this up we started motivating people through rewards through vouchers and amazon vouchers and all of the such just to generate some excitement but the real essence and the content was in terms of really looking at now we to re really have meaningful training and development individual learning plan improvement which always relegated to a paper and pen in some form in some digitized form in madrina len and things like that but we get to life we manifested that through a very active engagement and we will really take up these courses and they were very happy they got the certificate of appreciation and all that and we locate these into to their uh, set of employees got a lot more traction to elixir and are now planning to make that mandatory for uh, for upward movement in the organization so that's something where it directly contributes to the individual growth and they are very happy about it because they are getting world class education literally at zero cost so uh, priyank is talking about business going through tough times crunch what type of engagement initiatives could be targeted my favorite this is my favorite because i constantly live in a very very tough business environment because typically uh, trading a uh, sort of a business uh, your margins are very very low so we always look at zero cost and one of the example which i gave was elixir uh, we look at zero cost uh, engagement one when i mean zero cost extremely low cost or very min- put minimal cost uh, it's only really when you really spend huge sums of money you will get uh, worried we don't uh, 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 cost as much and the other example of uh, is uh give as uh, shubham said give them a lot of memories i think a lot and that's the next question which uh, shirin is also asking is on what are the differences in aging gen y and gen x any specific tips we are also now confronted with gen z now not only gen y and gen x gen z and other people because we are getting a lot of interns we need to motivate interns also so that's another one big thing one of the biggest things which i have found very useful and it might look very uh, sort of cliched or it might you some of you all might even think that it might not work but it's wonderfully is lot of dignity respect and freedom and give them meaningful roles when i go to campuses now people are demanding i have been to campuses for many years now now other people just used to come in and just do some project work, project work to campuses the students are demanding what is the project which you are going to give me please later so be very very clear give them a lot of space give them a lot of meaningful uh, projects give them a lot of freedom to do their job travel that's important and yes, yes. coming to the front end reward platform the instantaneous rewards so i found uh, the voucher mechanism to be a very very useful one the amazon and the flipkart and other things so we have been using them to the field um that feel really happy about it so the, you give them the complete freedom to choose what you want because uh, yes am i a bit lazy in trying to know the personalization of each person to that extent yes maybe it's very difficult in a large organization to completely personalize everything so to overcome this uh, problem we have left the choice to the person themselves by giving a voucher i think that's a very popular uh, mechanism which many people would be adopting or okay the way i would say i would be is to really know and get that additional kick 
or saying somebody is interested in photography, can you give a DSLR to him? Or is interested in cycling, can you really present a good cycle to him? I mean, that, I mean that's the other end of the spectrum. But if budgets, or if you have don't have budgets, I think the best way is, is give them uh, the opportunity to select themselves. I think that's a huge. Uh, it covers personalization, it covers individual individualization, and it gives them a lot of fun to uh, take back to the families. I think that's another one thing which we have really found. One of the things in my experience over the years is when you reward a person, also see how it can impact his family. To give a, uh, it gives him the flexibility to give it to his family members to actually make use of it and get what they want. At some stage, his family are also happy, then he is doubly happy. That's something which is very important. Asked about examples of shop floor engagement initiatives that have direct impact on productivity. We are doing a very wonderful initiative called meeting. And this is done on at the beginning of every shift. And, and um, this is about nine minute. Uh, we have purposely kept it at a nine minute activity, stand down meeting, where we come and discuss about what are the important things, what are the safety aspects, and what are the, the jobs to be done today, what is the target yesterday and how to get the target or not. Very quick huddle. It's like a quick huddle. So we call it the toolbox meeting. This has huge and tremendous impact on shop floor productivity because people are extremely focused on what is it that they need to do uh, for a particular shift. There's no fancy stuff about three-year vision and plan and five-year vision and plan. It's about what do you do for the next eight hours productively. I really given us tremendous amount of uh, uh, progress. We have got a very good increase in the number of people who have get incentives. We have cash incentives called delight for the shop floor people. It is called as delight for the sales people. It is called as pinnacle, and uh, uh, it has really improved. Uh, we have our uh, in sales. We have the sunrise and sunset meetings every day, and in shop floor we have the toolbox meetings, uh, which has really improved productivity rate exchange and that is directly evidenced by the number of people who get the light incentives. It's tremendously shown a growth uh, over the last 18 months. It has grown from 34%. Today it is at about close to 70% of the organization. I aim is to get to somewhere around 90 to 95% of the organization to get incentives because it's directly related to the service turnover or the labor turnover which they bring in. Uh, we are a service organization, vehicle service organization. So we use a term called labor turnover. Yeah. Then um, I think most questions have been answered. I don't see any questions than this. I hope I've answered all the questions. Yeah, we set up of questions I'm seeing on the chat box. So if there are any other questions, I'll be happy to take. I would leave it to Rahul and uh, Naina to conclude. I also say that, I mean, though I know it's uh, slightly out of turn, but um, I write a lot, so you can uh, do for me on uh, uh, Facebook or LinkedIn. And uh, in case some of you are interested to read some of what I write. I digress, uh, digressive, but I thought it would be pertinent to say this here. Uh, I would I would thank all of you to be uh, be a part of the webinar and uh, thank you Madhu and Subham for being such wonderful speakers and uh, giving us such invaluable information uh, in this webinar. I would really like to thank our uh, today's webinar partner XOXO Day for their for their uh, partnership and uh, everybody in the participants who have been a lovely audience and. Uh, 
you know there are, there are many more uh, webinars to come so stay stay tuned thank you so much and we will come back with many more you have a day thank you thank you everyone thank you thank you much do thank you bye